Look at this. So here we are at a gateway to West Texas. We're at Monahan State Park. And they're beautiful Monahans. Right? Whole whole area just smells like oil and gas. It smells like a persistent fart. But this little state park has a lot of cool plants on it. You get these rolling sand dunes. And a lot of plants doing moth pollination. Because that's what makes sense in a place where it gets hot and dry as balls. And this is one of those moth pollinated plants with such a distinct smell to them. All these moth pollinated plants have the same general kind of smell. It smells like phenolic compounds, kind of alcoholy. So you got a hydroxyl group and a benzene ring and uh, I'm not a fucking organic chemist, but the, either way, it smells fucking divine. This is Euploca convolvulacea and it's a member of the uh, borage family, Boraginaceae. Look at all those stiff little hairs on there. Good indicator of the borage family, just like your cryptanthas and your, your uh, phacelias. Etc. Look at those stiff little hairs. Protecting those leaves from the UV, reflecting some light, reducing the uh, the uh, boundary layer, humidity, all right? Just like a windbreak, you know, up in, in like a farm field, all right? Stopping the airflow across those leaves, which removes moisture from those stomata, all right? Airflow, of course, dries things out. God, that damn smell. And again, going for the moth pollination. Moths pollinate a shit ton of plants because... They're out at night. Flowers bloom at night when it's cooler, and I, uh, you know, not the sun's not out. It's not as hot. You're gonna get uh, less chance of those flowers getting zapped by the sun and drying out, losing less moisture. You can see they're very dominant here, blooming at night. Flowers that bloom at night got a lot of other plants doing that as well, including this uh, this bush onothra over here. There you go, another moth pollinated flower. And this thing, even though the flower is so tiny, is so goddamn fragrant. So pleasant smelling, like some sort of damn perfume. Again, emanating those uh, those fragrance, those fragrances that are so reminiscent of moth pollinated flowers. So amazing that whether it's a cactus or an evening primrose or a plant in the borage family or a salvia, despite being unrelated, they emanate the same scent, the same general scent. I was hanging out with these floral chemists at uh, Cornell in September. They got me jazzed on all this stuff. Pretty goddamn amazing. Epiphyllum oxypetalum, a, a epiphytic cactus from the cloud forest that's moth pollinated, does the same thing. And it it's just smells this exact same way. Datura ridei, nightshade family, another desert plant, smells the same way. But look at that. This thing, these flowers bloom at night. And remarkable about this plant, Onothra cyneria, is that it's a subshrub. A lot of these evening primroses are either annuals or or, you know, biennials or whatever. They don't get this big. They don't have a woody, a goddamn woody stem like that. And look at those leaves. Again, very obvious they're adapted to a desert. Look at that. Kind of chalky blue, covered in hairs. A lot of hairy plants in the deserts. Again, hair, the hairs reduce that boundary layer humidity. They reduce that airflow across the leaf, which dries out the leaf. They reflect light. They help keep leaf temperatures down. They act as a shade cloth on the plant. You know, if we were to be hairy in the desert, we'd sweat our asses off because we're generating heat. Plants aren't really generating heat. They just got to reflect it. Fucking amazing, man. A lot of cool stuff. And that, that again, that smell, that smell of those moth-pollinated flowers. Yeah, see this, Euploca? Look at it. A bee couldn't climb in there. See that little pinhole? But moths have tongues. They got tongues they can unfurl. It's not really a tongue. It's a proboscis. But you get the idea. Unrolls like that, just like Darwin's moth for that uh, Angracum he was always ranting about before he even discovered the moth. He saw an orchid with a long nectar spur, so there must be a moth that's got a tongue that long or a proboscis that long. So the moth hovers above this, sticks this little proboscis in there, gets stuck down there at the base of that flower. You got all these anthers that are conate, all fused together, comes out with a bunch of pollen, flies off to another flower, and hopefully deposits it on uh, the stigma that's also deep within that trumpet-like tube. You just can't get over the fragrances. It's like a perfume. Oh, it smells so good. These are already done. You got plenty more going off, though. Oh, and speak of the devil, here's another moth-pollinated plant. I mean, all yuccas are moth-pollinated plants. They got symbiotic relationships with yucca moths, but uh, this is a really rare one. Look how big those goddamn seeds are. This is yucca campestris. Look at that, it's as big as the inflorescence gets, that's the plant right there. This might all be one single plant. I just can't get over those fucking seeds. Look at how big those are, Jesus Christ. Little black flakes with those that phytomelanin in that, that black pigment, like all the yuccas and agaves have. Actually, most members of uh, Asparagales have that 
that phytomelanin most, but not all. Look at those giant fucking seeds on that thing. God damn it. Just a big, beautiful, spiny clump. I just got here. I bet there's like 10 other species of moth-pollinated plant within a half-mile radius of me right now. Anyway, that's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.